this video we're going to talk about wrapping around top um, you can watch the video and pretty much see what I'm doing you'll probably get how to do it yourself but we want to get a diagonal measurement here for a metal uh, from halfway from the top then we're going to get about what the arch is this way that's about 56 and then we're going to get our width of the whole window measure out to get to the outer edge of your brick mold I've got two and an eighth there uh, two and about two and a half here. I don't want to go all the way up right here uh, Because I won't be able to seal the face of this properly. So I'm gonna go usually to that line Of the brick mode and now I got two and an eighth by two and a half You want to mark this once you bend that that's that measurement when you made the arch measurement That's what you want these pieces to be and then you'll mark it every two inches and cut it we're going to do this in two sections it's a lot easier and better to work this in two sections than trying to do it in a whole section and when you cut your face arches you have to do it two pieces because of how big it is cut these every two inches all the way to the fold all the way to the bend all right now i'm going to lay these out in a driveway to mark these arches itself that's going to cover all those slits in the metal I got, I'm going to get a center mark, and I'm using the wood that's in this driveway. You can use the line, uh, a cut line in concrete, or you can get you a scrap piece of aluminum and put across there and basically make a triangle. You want your outer edge, that the width of the round top, the whole opening, you want to have at least five inches of metal in from that and see that's what I was just showing off right there I'll pointing right here you want at least like five inches from your outer edge of uh, your total width so I got at least five inches there and then I mark my center I'm going to lock my tape in at the center mark I have a long screw in the board right there so I can rotate this tape and, and trace this arch out so I have a three inch screw in there and I locked my tape on a halfway mark, it was like 38 and three quarter or something crap like that. So, uh, and uh, I made sure my center of the triangle was down low enough I can cover this whole arch. You want at least three inches, at least five inches of metal towards you of this arch you're tracing out. So when you trace this line out, you want at least five inches of metal on your side of this line. All right, so I'm just going to rotate this tape around, and that screw, that long screw, allow, and that locked uh, tape makes this really easy just to spin this around. All right. Um, now I'm going to move. I'm going to open this up a little bit because it's better to be a little bigger. I have those connected right about center, but I'm going to open it up a little bit and trace out a little longer. Uh, it's better to make these too long than not long enough. So that's why I say over, oversize those two pieces so they you know they're going to overlap. All right, and I got at least five inches on my side of that line. When you snip these, use small snip strokes, not really long like that, because it'll ripple and 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 kind of fold that metal around. So, and you want to make sure not to put any burrs on this, and you'll see why here in a little bit. Don't put any burrs in this line right here you're cutting. Cut a really nice, clean line. Try not to bend and fold up the metal anymore you have to. Really try not to get any ripples or curves in it. Let's get that piece out of the way. Uh, I fast forward in here, so nice cuts. All right, now we're gonna do those pieces that we put all the slits in is how we're going to get our arch started and I cut that bottom to where it fits and we're going to start folding around this is this this is the most tedious part right here this is you know make it or break it right here I usually get my middle nailed in first I'm just going to tack it in all right so you'll see me just tack this center and it'll kind of fall a little bit on me on the from the top uh, make sure your bottom's all the way tight Get you a nail in the middle and just tack it. Do not put the nail all the way in. You'll probably have to move this nail. So basically what we want as we're arching this around, as we're bending this around, we're going to tack nails up. And we're wanting those spaces in those two inch slits to be about the same as they go all the way up so we know we got good curvature. We're going to try to get all these spaces the same. 
and so I know, and I'm kind of judging it off the line of the uh, brick mold also. Uh, that line of the brick mold is kind of telling me I'm going to have the same measurement going around when I cut the other side of that face metal we just did on the driveway. I'm just going to call that the face metal, the arch cap that's going to go over to this. We had already cut the outer line that's going to go against the brick. So I want you to spend some time on this. This, this is the part, you, like I said, you can make it or break it here. You don't put your nails all the way tight. And then once you start feeling pretty confident that you're getting this in pretty good shape, put whatever many nails is needed to, that's going to keep this right. It's going to keep it in place. All right. I do have to move this one nail here. You see how it's kind of being weird? So I'm going to pop it out. Like I say, you just want to tack your first few nails as you're doing this, and it'll eventually just start getting a little easier and a little better. If you try to do this all in one sheet all the way around, it'll start to curve out on you, and it, it becomes damn near impossible. It's just best just to do this in two sections as I have. Now, these are kind of bowed out a little bit on me, so I'm going to squeeze these in because I like my metal sit more natural uh, before I happen to put nails in it. So it's sitting a little more natural now. Uh, I'm kind of gauged off that line in the brick mode. So you don't want that piece that you're folding around, those notches to go all the way to the brick because you won't be able to seal it as good. So and you'll see when we seal the uh, face over top of this that we won't be able to glue directly to that brick mold. Now I'm measuring this to check to see from brick to outer edge, I add an eighth of an inch to that measurement. So I ended up with three and five eighths all the way around. And going off the line of your brick mold is what helps you keep a good consistent measurement around your arch. This is a rinse and repeat. We're just doing the other side. I got the bottom all the way down where I need it. I'm gonna tack a nail. It just kind of popped out right there on the bottom, but it is down all the way. Just tack a little nail. So we're gonna just uh, start working this around again. Like I said, you're just gonna start tacking. Uh, now we're gonna mark the center, right as close to center as we can, we're gonna cut off. And this is, this is the one line we're gonna see in this, but uh, you don't pay much attention to it. So we're gonna have one little line right there. And we're, I'm kind of pulling to my right here to get it tight against the stop that's holding the glass in. So, you know, we want it to be nice and tight because you can see this from the inside. If you're not tied up against the window stop, it shows a light on the inside. So you want to make sure your metal is sitting tight against your, the, the window, the glass stop. And it's the same thing. We just start feeling good about our spacing and our curvature, and we just tack a lot of nails in it. Uh, if sometimes this is stubborn right here where those two meet and, and it, they don't quite want to line up so I may tack a nail here if it's a vinyl replacement window we're actually putting in you don't have to do the driveway trick where you're not you know you're having to trace it out you can just trace the round top before you install it that makes it a lot faster too now these are those pieces now I know I need three and five eighths all the way around so I'm going to put my finger at three and five eighths on the tape and I'm going to glide my finger and hold this pencil at three and five eighths around this metal. That's why you want to make sure you don't have burrs in your metal. Because I'm going to, this makes a really nice clean line here. And I ain't getting cut for it. Uh, you do have to be a little careful. You know, if you've been doing metal a long time, you know, you kind of get calloused up and you know how to glide your finger across metal, but if you're kind of new to it, you want to be careful here. You cut your hand pretty easy, so don't be in a hurry. Just glide your finger across there. Uh, just enough to, you know, you can get this line three and five eighths. This is making a, a keystone. My, since I'm three and a half inches, I'm gonna go about four and a half or so. Um, I want, uh, I generally go by inch longer and inch wider than what the face of whatever keystone I'm putting on. If it's a six inch header I'm putting a keystone in, then I'm doing by seven inch by seven inch square here. So I'll mark the top 
a half, uh, like I said, by an inch wide. I was about four and a half. And I eyeball what looks like a good angle. Then I'm going to square this line up, measure what my angle is, and then come back that same measurement here. So the first angle, I just kind of eye it and go, okay, that looks like a good angle. I mark it and then bring it in. All right, you're going to bring it in for your fold. That's where those other little marks are. So that should be the same arch, excuse me, the same angles. And uh, if you just kind of see what I did there, you squared up, get your same measurement for your angles, bring it in about a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. You don't need a lot, about three eighths of an inch. You'll bring it in for your fold. And you're going to fold those two pieces, those two lines for, uh, for protrusion you know, for it to stick out for your keystone. So, like I said, it was three and a half inch, three and five eighths inch uh, face for, to cover the, you know, on the arch, the arch is three and a half inches, three and five eighths. So I made it four inches, brought it in about four and a half, four and a half, brought it in three eighths on each side or so, something like that. It's, it's no real science to it. It's just a lot of eyeball and, but like I said, if you're, got a three and a half inch face you're wanting to put a keystone on three and a half inch arch three and a half inch header go to about four and a half inches wide and then bring it in about three eighths for your folds uh and just be a good judge on your angles you don't want to angle too much or not too much again when you're cutting these arches when you're cutting that line uh cut it easy because the harder you cut it and the longer the strokes you cut the more this will curve around you'll see me wanting to straighten it out i lay it down on my table i want it to naturally lay flat and i will gently assist it until it it mostly wants to lay flat on its own and then i'll cut this one as well like i said i get square that up and as i was saying short strokes shorter strokes you Keep it the less it's going to curl that metal. We want to try to curl that metal as little as possible. The more you curl it, the more we have to straighten it up right here when we lay it down. And like I said, I'll just kind of gently twist on it and counter the curls that's in it to get it to want to naturally lay flat. Like I said, I'm all about my metal being natural before I'm gluing and nailing. Now we're going to start putting our... We're almost done now, so we're going to start putting these face pieces on all right like i said if you have a vinyl window you're going to install a window it just becomes a lot easier because you can actually um, trace that round top on one sheet on one big sheet of aluminum bring it down a little bit you just want to make sure you leave yourself uh the room for you know, about three and a half four inches of space above your line if you trace a round top I'm a little big. You can see my fingers kind of uh, hidden quite a bit there. So I'm going to notch out, but I'm going to cut on the brick side, not the outside line. That outside line is perfect. If I want something not to be perfect, I'd rather be on my brick side where I'm going to caulk and seal than on the outer edge. That outer edge is a real nice line. So I want to keep that nice, pretty arch. Now I'm not sticking out as much. It's okay to stick out an eighth or so. It's better to stick out a little bit than not to stick out at all or to be too small because if you're too small, you can see this piece that we're caulking right now. You want to glide your finger for a nice pretty bead on the outer edge and then the rest of it, just put a lot of silicone, and I mean a lot. Don't be bashful. Don't be cheap. Put you a real thick bead on the inner edge. Uh and all through the middle. And then I just glide my finger on the outer edge where the two pieces, you know, meet where the fold is. So it's a nice pretty seal and it doesn't ooze out everywhere. But between the brick and the center there, man, I just, you just glob that crap on. Now I'm gonna dry fit this one again. I'm gonna mark my center and cut it. That's where the keystone's gonna hide. You can see since we did trim the other piece, I'm gonna need to trim a little bit off this one. This one fitted a little bit better, so I don't have to trim as much. I just need to trim off the top a little bit. You can see where it sticks just a little bit bigger than the other one where we had trimmed it. But generally, this one's ended up fitting where it needed very little trimming, just that top piece a little bit. 
I probably could have done without even trimming this a little bit because the keystone's going on. But I'm going to go ahead and even it up anyways, even though the keystone's going to hide it. Now, I said, put you a nice pretty bead on the uh, outer edge and then the rest of it, shit ton of caulking. This is fast forward. You see all that caulking? Seal that booger up. And there's a nice pretty edge of a little quarter inch bead on the outer edge. And now I'm just gonna press this on, making sure it's sealed. All right. When you got stone like this, it's not as nice, but if you have a brick, you can, you know, a brick, it's a little better, cleaner outer edge. Uh, between the brick and the metal, is makes it a lot easier to caulk. But this, this stone's a little rough to work with. Now, we're going to dry fit our keystone, make sure everything's good, trim on it as necessary. And then we're just going to put you some really big beads of caulk in there so it adheres to it. We're not putting no nails in it. Like I said, we just have that one nail right there. Uh, we're centering this. Uh, like I said, that line under the bottom wasn't quite as centered as my keystone is, but that's okay. So now we're going to take a little touch up, hit this little nail here because it's bugging me. There we go. And then we're going to caulk around this keystone. You've done pretty work now, so don't mess it up. So just don't need a whole lot. Just, just pretty up the edges, clean it up. And now we're going to glaze around the glass and make sure this thing doesn't leak. You can also put a bead of a silicone... Uh, between the brick and the metal also. It's a little harder to do when you have a stone like this. Um, I think it would have been messier to try to put a bead of silicone around. So you just want to make sure you have a really good thick bead of silicone before you press that on, uh, that arch. Uh, generally, uh, with a nice clean brick, is isn't real jagged stone like this, we would run a nice bead uh, between the brick and the uh, arch as well. I still have to caulk the windows below there. I have wrapped those. That's preserved on the glass on the bottom windows. I kind of use it to wipe my fingers off, and then when I'm done, I'll peel that off, and there you go. Here's all the other round tops I've done. Uh, thanks for watching. If there's any questions you can ask me, reach out to me. Uh, but you can do a lot with this application the keystones and wrapping round tops.